Hi, this is Bryce with Kansas City Sprinters, and I wanted to make a video today to show you some of the workings and adjustment and the replacement process for the hinges and doors on your T1N Sprinter van. I get asked a lot uh, how to replace hinges and adjust the doors so that they shut better, and I figured I would just make a video to uh, show everything that I am aware of. So we'll start with um, the doors themselves. There is no difference between tall and low roof doors except that upper body panel. Everything else is exactly the same, uh, so that's good to know. You don't need to get specific parts. Uh, on this van, these hinges are bad and these hinges are good, and I'm gonna show you why. Um, these are bifold hinges that are exterior mounted, and there's an order in which they're supposed to act, um, actuate or go and that when you open, it's supposed to pivot here and then there, and when you close, it's supposed to pivot there and then there. And you can see these are busted, and I'm gonna show you why. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a hard time getting this door open. So, if you look here, there is a, a bar, and what this bar does is it works in conjunction with these two, um, I'm gonna call them dowels, and there's flat spots and round spots. Basically the round spot, um, it travels along the round spot and once it hits the flat spot, the bar is supposed to shift this way and then allow this, the gap, to be able to, sh to um, no longer be pinched by the bar and to pivot there. What happens is the bar wears out. Um, sometimes these break, but usually it's the bar. The bar wears out and then it shifts out of order. You can actually, drill this out um, and flip it over and restore your hinges. That's a video for another day. That's kind of a, a longer thing. But that is basically why most people's hinges don't work is that bar is, is worn out. Um, it happens from grime and people just not taking care of their hinges. Um, a good way to take care of your hinges is to clean them. These are really nasty and dirty, as you can see, and grease them. If you clean and grease them, a lot of times um, you can avoid this. Um, you see that one down there too, so there's two. Um, so that's kind of the basic on the hinges. If you ever have to replace the door, uh, my process is usually getting the new hinge to line up with the paint lines on the body um, here and as well as um, around here. You can see there's some paint lines. If you, if you remove that, it's bare metal. And uh, you can get at those bolts inside of these holes and actually behind the um, catch arm here. So if you remove the catch arm to get at those. Um, and it's often really helpful to have a second set of hands or I like to use a floor jack to support um, the door. And that's kind of the, the where I would start with replacing hinges is line it up with the paint lines and see how it shuts. I'll give more tips on that in a second. Um, then if you are uh, having an issue where you close your door and then it comes and it pops right back out just a little bit. Uh, what that is, is this latch here, you're gonna watch me, and uh, that is the first position of closing. So it closes just enough that it's not gonna swing open on you while you're driving, um, but not enough that it's actually sucking the door into the body of the vehicle, and it's really supposed to close to about there. And if it closes to there, you can see it's really nice and solid and you have to actuate the door in order to get the latch to drop open. Um, if your latch will not even go to the second position, you have an issue inside here that it's usually the, the cable has gotten stuck and it's holding the door open. Uh, so that's kind of uh, some understanding of what to do there. Uh, you're gonna watch this door and notice that this door uh, opens correctly. It opens on the first uh, hinge and then the second hinge. That's what it's supposed to do, that's not what it's supposed to do. And the reason this is bad is because the, this part and some other parts, they they tear up this seal. And so you'll you'll notice people that don't replace their hinges that are bad, their whole seal gets all chonged up and then you get to buy $80 uh, you know, seal um, and they rattle funny. Anyways, uh, so that's a little bit of like the hinges and, and how to adjust them. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is the um, upper and lower strike plates. So I don't know why they designed this um, to be plastic, but there's supposed to be, on this one there isn't, I haven't replaced it yet, an upper strike plate that the door hits 
and this lower threshold strike plate down here. And how this works is there are these, I'm gonna call them guides, metal guides on the door. One down there that's not adjustable and one up there that is adjustable. And what it is is you set the door in conjunction on the body so that the lower guide just barely kisses this bottom plate and then you what you do is you set the upper guide um, well I like to do is shut the door get inside and slide that up until it touches the top plate then I open the door and push it past that maybe like an, a quarter, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch or something um, and what that does is when you shut the door it creates a pinching um, action and that helps to seal the door and stop the rattling so if you have rattling it's either because you're missing your plates I've seen guys make them out of metal and fabricate them and stuff it's kind of goofy but it works um, or you have you have broken uh, you, these are out of adjustment or or another thing that can happen um, people get frustrated by this and they don't replace the part so they just adjust the whole door up so that the the catch the um, the bar inside of this uh, driver's side door uh, catches uh, inside of the body hole and I'll show you what I mean there so uh, if you go over here this is the latch assembly when you shut this most people don't realize this they um, they tend to do this and this is okay and then they take this door and they shut it and that's actually incorrect you want to shut first and then go like that and that locks the door into place and what happens when you do that is there is a little bar up there and I'm gonna do it right now it pops that open and it lands inside that hole so uh, it's really important that you shut this correctly um, and uh, if you're having an issue with uh, this door not staying shut and kind of popping back out a little bit something you can try you can get a crescent wrench I think this is a 19 um, and you can get on this and you can loosen it and you can actually adjust this up down left right um, to get it to line up correctly with this you can see how that's pretty good that's right about where you want it sometimes it's out of adjustment um, or sometimes it's it's set too far back so um, it this isn't able to grab and um, some of that can be um, attributed to uh, these little pins these pins on the hinges are to um, change the resting position of the angle of the door. So uh, it's kind of hard to explain uh, in the video. You kind of have to think about it. Most people can kind of get the idea is that if you change the pin location, the depth of the pin, it allows the, the pitch of the door to shut more acutely or, um, or to rest out further. Um, and so sometimes you can, if you're having a problem with that not catching all the way, it can be these being set so that the door protrudes out too far. Um, that, that's part of it, that's not all of it. Um, another thing it can be is that these are not lining up correctly um, or do you just have a bad latch. So that's a little bit of uh, that. Let me think here if I forgot anything else. Oh, uh, the, the way that the electronics work inside of this door is they have these, um, these electronic um, pins that line up with these plates. Um, and when you close the door, they make an electric connection. And so they power all your locks and um, your rear defroster and uh, your bulbs for the uh, license plate. So sometimes these just get all gummed up and if you just take some sandpaper and etch those off, that'll bring them back. Other times, um, these are out of alignment, so they're not quite hitting correctly. Um, other times, uh, these are all ground off. I'll show you the ones over here, they're terrible. They're all ground off. Um, other times, there's a, there's a wire behind here that gets broken. Um, you can kind of reach your hand in there and just feel and make sure they're all connected. If there's one that's loose, then you know um, that's your issue. If you ever have to get in this panel, the way you do it, you slide this off and pull it up. There'll be two T30 bolts under there. Take both of those out, pop the whole panel off, comes right off, um, and you can get in there to service. Uh, what you need is service inside of there. Uh, over here, I'm gonna show you the, these are all kind of ground off. Um, this still works, but um, that's not correct. Uh, and that is pretty much everything I can think of um, as far as how to replace doors or take care of these. Um, oh, I, I got something to show you. So when you're replacing hinges or doors, it can be a real art to get these to shut correctly. Um, and to look good on the body. And so what you're looking for is you wanna check the, the gap down at the bottom of the door 
and you want to check the gap at the top of the door and you want them to be the same if you see a spot that's narrow or wide it tells you that one of these doors is out of adjustment uh, and the way you can tell which door it is is you do the same thing over here okay yeah you got about a little bit there a little bit there that's about right that's the same and you come over to this one and eh, it's a little bit different but it's 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 pretty close so it shows you that uh, there's a difference uh, between w uh, which door is out of alignment so check your gaps on all your doors and again make sure when you initially set the door level you want the bottom uh, guide to be kissing the bottom strike plate um, and that will get you in the general area of where you want to be with having your doors uh, line up and close correctly um, again, if you ever have to replace hinges or doors, it's very helpful to have a second set of hands. It's also helpful um, to just work with one bolt. I don't, I don't put all three bolts in and then close the door and then go, oh, didn't close correctly and then have to take all three back out. Just use one. Uh, it's enough to hold it to the body and uh, if you need to make an adjustment, you can just loosen the one, tap, tap, tap it over, put it back on, close the door again, um, and it gets you to where you need to be quicker than having to do all three. So that's, uh, that's pretty much everything I can think of off the top of my head. Um, uh, hopefully that helps people. Um, again, my name's Bryce. I, I run a small uh, shop here in Kansas City, uh, Kansas City Sprinters. Uh, follow me on Instagram, uh, Kansas City Sprinters, and uh, I also sell a lot of uh, used sprinter parts and stuff like that. So I'll probably be making a few more of these videos. Uh, I hope this is helpful. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.